Hi guys, welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the common side effects that patients on antipsychotics encounter. So to begin with, we're going to take a look at something that's uh, encountered very frequently on the boards and that is QT interval. Now some antipsychotics have a very um, bad influence on the heart and that is to prolong the QT interval. And what do they do? they will lead to an increased incidence of tersades, right? Now, when patients experience this, they can also end up, unfortunately, in cases of sudden death. Now, out of the antipsychotics that we have, usually um, top of the list is ziprasodone. So if you see this name on the boards, this is the one, uh, this is the antipsychotic which is responsible for causing sudden death in patients through the mechanism of prolongation of the QT interval. Okay, now QT interval, what is the value to watch out for? We have um, a corrected QT interval of more than 500 milliseconds or uh, basically a change in uh, an increase in QTC of more than 60 ms from its previous um, you know, value. Patients on ziprasodone can suffer from uh, these uh, changes in uh, rhythm also if they have concurrent hypokalemia, if they have underlying cardiovascular disease, and if they have a pre existing QT uh, interval prolongation. Now, if this is found to happen to a patient, what do you do for the patient? You immediately stop the drug because you know it's life threatening. So you stop the drug. You want to investigate with an ECG, right? So the best investigation is an ECG. Now, what I want you guys to understand that although an ECG is the best investigation, we do not offer or do an ECG before we start uh, the patient on ziprasodone, unless of course they have an underlying reason for being at risk. Like for example, if they have an underlying CVD or they already have an underlying documented uh, heart rhythm problem. Uh, in that case, you will want to do an ECG before you start the drug. And also um, when the drug reaches therapeutic levels. So these are the two times when you will establish the, um, the pattern of heart rhythm in patients who are on ziprasodone. Okay. So um, another cause for doing an ECG will of course be if the patient suddenly develops new symptoms suggestive of uh, rhythm problems. Now, another um, side effect that we see with um, antipsychotic use is myocarditis. So myocarditis or um, cardiomyopathy will cause, again, potentially fatal outcomes. So which drug is more commonly cited here? It's clozapine, right? Clozapine is the most notorious one causing potentially fatal myocarditis. And um, usually this is seen in about four to eight weeks after treatment starts. So it's a pretty early on uh, manifestation and it's um, supposed to be a hypersensitivity reaction. So it's a drug reaction basically, that's the underlying pathology there. What is the investigation to uh, identify this? It's an echo. What do you do? You discontinue clozapine, although it's very hard then to find another alternative because patients usually are put on clozapine uh, as a last resort. However, um, if, the, if you know a patient who's on clozapine develops uh, chest pain, right, shortness of breath, increased um, uh, markers of inflammation like increased levels of CRP, increased levels of ESR, increased troponins, right, and um, increasing or changing levels of CPK and BNP, these are all indicators that they might be developing myocarditis or cardiomyopathy. And that is your cue to stop clozapine. 
Okay, so we're going to continue this discussion in um, some more videos. And to follow us, please subscribe to the channel so that you can keep um, making use of our videos. Thank you very much.